Hey guys, it's the Alex Man right here, working on uh, a Proto J5, a Proto G5, and uh, hold on, it's uh, it's Kyle's car. Kyle, say hi everybody. What's up? Everybody say hi, Kyle. Yeah, so we're doing brakes on this car, and so I figured I'd walk you guys through it. It's really a pretty simple process, uh, and it's very similar for many many Japanese front-wheel drive cars. So, all right. So how do you know when your brakes are bad? Well, there's uh, a couple ways that you can know. Uh, one thing that brakes usually do when they're starting to go bad is they make is they squeal. Uh, there's actually noise makers designed in most brake pads that'll warn you. They'll make some noise before they actually get to the point where they're going to damage anything. Uh, if they squeal, if they grind, that kind of thing, uh, they they might mean that your brake pads are getting worn out. But the best way to know is to take your wheel off and to look at the brake pads and see how much friction material is left. Uh, if there's anywhere less than like an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch, they're they're getting pretty low, and you should look at replacing them. First thing you're going to want to do is obviously buy yourself a set of brake pads. Uh, we had a coupon here, so we went and got the the best pads for the uh, the price of the good pads. Dirty. Also, you want to make sure that your car is full of uh, old receipts and uh, and the parking brake is on. If you forget the receipts, you're you're really going to screw yourself over. So make sure you don't forget those. I don't want the car falling on top of you. If it does and you didn't use receipts, it's your fault. Before you lift the vehicle, make sure you break all the lug nuts loose and block the camera. And now lift the vehicle. Alright, so looking here, you can see that uh, the outside pad has a little bit of material left. I mean, probably not to the point where it even needs to be replaced, but uh, the inside pad has slightly less. Not enough that I would even worry that the caliper is seized or, or not working correctly. So, we're going to go ahead and replace the pads. Next thing you might want to do is uh, take the pads out of the box and make sure that they look the same. Because uh, sometimes, you know, parts stores get parts mixed up, so make sure you got the right parts before you dive into it. Next thing is you can turn the steering wheel so that the bolts are facing towards you. And uh, it just makes things easier. Alright, so now we got the brakes facing towards us. Makes it a lot easier to, uh, to access everything. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull the this bolt out of here. You see on this Mazda Pro J5, there's just this cap here. And on the inside, I believe there's an Allen bolt. So we're just going to pull that out, and that allows us to flip this caliper up and get to the pads. Got a 8mm Allen on a breaker bar. And it just twisted right off. There we go. So that's good. And we'll just do the rest with the ratchet. So, once this is out of the way, you should be able to just lift the caliper up like this and the pads are now accessible. All right, the pads just slide perfectly straight away from the caliper or from the rotor and uh, they might be different so keep track of which one came from where that way you can match them up with the new pads when you put the new pads on. And you can see the inside pad was actually getting pretty pretty worn down there. Didn't get any didn't damage the rotor at all. The rotor's nice and smooth, so the rotor doesn't need to be replaced. But everything looks good here. Alrighty, so we've got our old pads here. This is the outside, and this is the inside. Now we just need to match them up with uh, a matching pair from our new ones. So that looks like that, and uh, this one looks like this one. So we can just swap these in to exactly where the old ones came off and start working on putting it back together. So now I'm going to take all these little shims out get everything clean, just use like brake parts cleaner and, uh, and a toothbrush before we put it all back together. That way the grease has a nice clean surface to, to go onto. Alrighty, so I'm just going to get some brake parts cleaner. I'm just going to spray this stuff here and then use a toothbrush. I didn't have a, a work toothbrush, but this is the same one I used to brush my teeth. I mean, brake parts cleaner, it cleans stuff off pretty good anyway, so it should be safe to use on, on your teeth. If you don't have a toothbrush, a pink rag works just as good. Don't use the red ones though. They suck. Alright, so we got the shims all cleaned up there. I don't know if they're really called shims, but uh wherever they are. But whatever they're all they are, we're uh yeah, they're clean. So in your box of brake pads, you may or may not have this uh brake grease. So you put this right on the surface here and it makes your brakes slippery. Um that's actually not true. You're supposed to put them on the sliding surfaces here. 
uh, where the brake pad, not the pad, but the uh, mount. Yeah, pretty much where it mounts connects to the caliper uh, bracket. So just a little bit. You don't really want to put too much because then it'll. Well, that would do you. Yeah, you know, if you put too much, it'll just kind of melt off and go in places that it's not supposed to. So that much is good. Then you slide it into the shims there. Maybe. <clears throat> and repeat for the other side. So now you might be saying, oh, you just slide this back down and bolt it all back together. Well, that would be nice, except uh, this piston is, is shot out, you know, to compensate for the brake pads getting thinner. So you can use a large C-clamp. I'm going to try to use these vice grips to push this piston back in. And now here's something else you need to watch out for. So can you pop the hood, Kyle? Underneath the hood of the car, something else you need to watch out for, uh, the brake master cylinder, you need to make sure that the reservoir doesn't get over full because as you compress that piston, it pushes brake fluid back through the system and into the master cylinder. And this one looks like we got uh, about a quarter inch of space or so, so that's not very much. So we're just going to keep an eye on it. If it gets too full, you have to remove some fluid out of there with a syringe or, or something. Kyle suggests using a straw. I think we have the piston compressed enough here. Don't forget this uh, little spring here. All it does is go right into here, like such. So we can just slide this you down. Put the, the, the pressure thing out. And we just put a light coating of grease on this bolt here. Just slide it into. Oops, this boot got pinched over a little bit. Once that's in there, we can just tighten the bolt up. All right, now that we got that tight, this little cap goes on the end. And uh, next goes on the wheel. All right, so once you finish up with one side, you just finish up. You do the exact same process on the other. I'm not going to show you both wheels, but uh, you know you get the idea. Uh, once you make sure the reservoir is topped up, you can press the brakes a couple times. Uh, because you will have to, since you compress the piston all the way back into the caliper, you need to uh, compress it back onto the brake pads. So depress it a couple times until it starts to feel normal again. And then you can start the car up and take it for a test drive. So, they work? Yeah, I think we stopped there. And you're supposed to avoid hard stops for the first. 30 stops or something like that. But basically, you just make sure they work. And they feel normal? Mm -hmm. Yep. Seems like a job well done. Alright guys, hope this video has helped you out. Brakes are a very important part of your car. Make sure you do the job right. I mean, if you if you do something wrong, you're going to have a bad day. I mean, a kid runs out in front of you, the kid's going to have an even worse day. So, keep that in mind. If you don't know what you're doing, uh, make sure you know what you're doing before you before you keep working on it. It's a pretty simple job overall, I must say. Just make sure that you keep an eye on the master cylinder reservoir when you're compressing the piston back into the caliper. And once you pump the brakes up after the job is complete, make sure you check the reservoir again to make sure it's not low. Uh, when you're checking the brakes to see if they're actually worn out, brakes typically wear faster on the passenger side, just like tires do. They wear faster on the passenger side generally. It's kind of strange. You might think, why? Uh, well, it's usually because the roads are banked, you know, over to the passenger side to let water drain off, and so there's more weight on that tire, that kind of thing. Uh, you wouldn't think it plays a di much of a role, but it actually does. Brakes do wear faster on the passenger side. Hopefully, this video has helped you out. Hopefully, it's uh, it's made some made something clear that you weren't aware of already. Uh, I hope that you can take this video and save yourself some money. But remember to be safe out there. Use common sense. YouTube also changed its, changed its channel recently, uh, you know, the whole format of everything. So I'm still kind of playing with that and figuring out what I want to do and how to make it look right. Something I did set up was a PayPal donation button. So you can click on that and donate as much or as little money as you'd like. And, you know, this isn't going to go towards my lunch or buy myself, you know, a friggin' 
uh, something stupid. It's uh, all the money that you give will go towards the YouTube channel. So you're helping me help you. So, But thanks for watching once again. I am the Alex Man, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Ha 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 ha!